felt like giving away. I've never seen anybody on that block dominated like he did. The Grizzlies just need to pound the two, just pound the field every time. Even though he's not from Memphis, it's like he's from Memphis. Like, as a crazy cool calm, but if necessary, like, he can get like that. I'm looking in the eyes, I can see. He got some fear in you, and I took advantage of that. No matter what he does, what he did before a game, after a game, between the lines, once that ball is tipped, there's nobody who's going to play harder. Nobody who's going to be more physical. Nobody who's going to outwork him. That's my mindset. Not to let them get out of here. No one will ever have a six-minute run like he did. Ain't nothing been giving easy to me. It ain't nothing giving easy to this town, so it's, it's a fit. It just sort of became like a rivalry. Two teams that play hard usually got in the like wrestling matches or whatnot. Let's transition into our favorite all-time sixth man. This one was fun guess. to do. Okay, let's go. Number one, Manu Ginobili. There's like a move that he brought to the NBA that is still done today, the Eurostep. Like, there you that's go. Manu. That, that, without Manu, we have no Eurostep. Join Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Ray Johnson, every Thursday as we debate the hottest topics in the NBA. IMHO on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and our social channels. Check out the all-new WinBet Sports Bar located at FedEx Forum, just off Bill Street Alley. Open every event night plus non-event Saturday and Sunday starting at 11 a.m. The WinBet Sports Bar is your lock for the best local brews, food, and all the games. Sports fans looking for action and a little extra juice can receive exclusive in-bar-only promotion, including odds, boosts, free bets, and more from the WinBet Sportsbook app. Plus, watch all the games. College and Pro with over 30 TVs and Sunday NFL tickets. Parking is free for guests and available in the Gossett Motors Garage. For more information, go to FedEx Form.com. Fans back, that means energy's back, that means the vibe is back. That's how the game's supposed to be. That's like one of the best parts about even going out there is just having everybody with you, having your real six man out there loud, towels, yelling, all that. At this point, Memphis is really engraved in my skin, not just on my chest. I represent it well. It means a lot to me. It means a lot that we can come together as a community and just ride for our own and just be who we are. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K through 6th grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit Grizzly grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Hear that? That's the plumpest, juiciest hot dogs you've ever seen getting their grill on. But we both know what'll make it sound even better. Oh yeah, it's a Pepsi to go with your hot dog. Because when you're chomping on America's favorite meal, relish, mustard, and onions perfectly blending into a crescendo of flavor, there's only one thing that makes everything about that moment better. A cold, refreshing Pepsi. See what I mean? It's like music to my ears. Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Ah. And we are all tied up in the bottom of the ninth. Base is loaded. Electric in here. Electric. It all comes down to this pitch. You throw the fastball here. But it looks like Brock is walking off the field and is leaving the stadium? What is going on here? Uh, I'm getting word that he left to get a taco. When you need a taco, you need a taco. Introducing the new Cantina Crispy Melt Taco, only from Taco Bell. At participating U.S. locations for a limited time only. Live from FedEx Forum, this is the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com. Presented by WinBet. Now, here's your host, Chris Vernon.
Here we go. It's noon on GrindCityMedia.com. It's Chris Farnan's show. Welcome, 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 welcome. It is the Friday, December 10th, 2021 edition of the show. Today on the show, number 50 is going to hang in the rafters starting tomorrow evening. And the man that wore said number, Zach Randolph, is going to join us in studio today. It's going to be a pretty great weekend after what was a rather good night at FedEx Forum. The Grizzlies beat the Lakers by double digits after getting some uh, tough news right before the game. Still were able to come away with the win. We'll get you ready for the weekend. And the weekend around here is going to be rather busy itself with uh, Memphis playing against Murray State tonight at FedEx Forum and then turn around tomorrow night, one of the biggest events Certainly on the Grizzlies calendar is the first retired jersey. As I mentioned, Zebo is going to join us here. Let's do it. Turn it up. Everybody's having a good day. All right. So last night was fantastic uh, with the Grizzlies win at FedEx Forum. Today's going to be great. I'm super excited to have Zach in studio. Uh, I was with him on Sunday for the debut of the documentary that was done by Mike Blevins and his Grind City Media crew, uh, 50 for the City, that came out. A lot of people have already watched that on YouTube. If you haven't, you should check it out because it is extremely well done um and a lot of buzz still over the last couple of days uh, a lot of oscar buzz regarding my performance in it um so i'm looking forward to i'm, I'm actually going to be crushed if i'm not uh at least nominated for best supporting actor in a, a documentary film about an nba player um zebo's going to join us and it's honestly like rather surreal you know we had him on for, what, I mean, the better part of 10 years. I don't know if we've gone a year without having Zebo on the show, <laughs> you know, over the course of the last. And he has been uh, a significant portion of any Grizzly fan's life uh, for the better part of a decade. And is still, you know, rather present. You know, he's at, he's at, he's at games. He's certainly still doing things in the community. In fact, after he's on the show today... At 2 o'clock, he's going to do a community service project this afternoon uh, here in Memphis. And then, of course, tomorrow, they have planned a massive deal. I mean, there's going to be some of his rap artists there. I know Big 30 is going to be there. I know uh, Moneybag Yo is going to be there. And then they got all these speakers like uh, Rasheed Wallace. Uh, our old buddy Damon Stoudemire is going to be coming in town. Um Bonzi Wells is going to be speaking. Um, Chris Wallace, who actually is weirdly now with the Houston Rockets, he's going to be there. Uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great because they're, they're going to be doing a tribute to him. They're going to be showing videos. Then there's going to be these rap performances. And then, of course, you're going to have this moment where you're going to see this thing go up in the rafters. Uh, it's going to be the first number that has been retired of any of the Memphis Grizzlies. And... Uh, it should be really fun. And I'm really glad that it's not, you know, I guess it could have come at any time, but you're coming off of what was one of the best wins of the season for sure against the Lakers last night and everybody feeling great about the team. You see where they are in the standings. You see the run that they have been on. You see them not only being able to hold down the fort without John Morant, but be awesome. With in the absence of Morant. Then they lose Dylan Brooks right before the game last night as he goes into safety protocols and are still able to get a win against the Lakers. You know, there's always a threat, I guess, whenever you're going to do this. Because they announced years ago that they're going to, you know, one day his number's going to hang in the rafters. It's after, you know, he was done here in Memphis. Uh, Robert Perry had come out and said that. 
I mean, there's a chance that, you know, by the time you hang uh, the number in the rafters or something, that you don't feel good about the team and then it's like you're just pining for when you loved it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there are those there are those situations with all manner of teams, right? And guys, it's like, oh, now we get to celebrate when the team was awesome and we loved them and it brought great feelings to us. Um, and instead, now, uh, now when it goes up in the rafters, everybody's already – you feel great about what's currently going on and you feel good about – those years past, so it's going to be great. I can't wait for the weekend. Before I get to anything, I welcome John Roser to the show. John Roser, a.k.a. the Colon Rangers, the body Band, a senior sack, a.k.a. Johnny Beckles, Johnny Beckles, a.k.a. the Grim Roser, John Hustle, Johnny Asparagus, Johnny Net Carp, a.k.a. John Lance. What up? Oh, 50. Love 50. He's going to be in at 12.30 today. 12.30. 12.30, yep. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I still what? have. Oh my goodness! If you've seen the documentary, if you have seen the documentary, you have seen John Roser yeah. in the crowd as a fan yes. holding up a massive Zebo head. Yep, that is the head. Let's I, go. I still have it. That is the exact. This is the exact one. The original. The original I that you are holding up during the playoffs. Yep, still have it to this day. Pretty good condition considering the years. There's a little smudge here, but yeah, for the most part, it's. Holds up. Pretty good big head. Yeah. Devin Walker's here. He is the microphone mangler. He is Senor Quasadilla. He is Mr. Math. He is Navajo Joe. He is the reporter. I have my water. Stay hydrated, guys. Just let you know, drink your oh, water. what happened to mine? Yeah, where'd your water I had, go? I don't know. I had you that got, huge bottle Yeah, somewhere. what is going on, bro? Stay, everybody I got, had it. I've got my Aquafina. Yeah, thank, where you go, Roser? I had I a huge water bottle. I must have left it in the, in the uh, what's it called? The kitchen. Stay hydrated. But no, uh, I'm going to show off these. Yeah, yeah, that's the that. uh, commemorative uh, yeah, record. Let's get a at, zoom in there. Let's Robbie? get a zoom in. Robbie, come on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. This is. Hey. 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 We hey. found the right camera. There we go. We got that. And then on the back, people have been asking, like, what's so what's on the record? It's two sides. Yeah. Two sides. And then every one of his Chris Vernon show interview, your yeah, interview. Yeah, we're, we're on a couple tracks. We're couple couple, we got a we got couple features. We got a couple features. It's two sides. It's a two-sided record. You know, we got the. The Zebo calls from Ver- from Hasseltine, Pete. We got some from an interview with Vernon on here. Yeah, when do I get my royalties for this? Yeah, yeah. You got a couple of interviews on here, Roller. Yeah. Just, just three of them. Is that right? Yeah. And, pe- and, and people are calling yeah. this the yeah, two uh, interviews. the best double album since probably uh, The Love Below and Speaker Box by Outkast. Can't Probably confirm. true. Yeah. Probably true. Uh, real quickly before I forget this, let me just say uh, the big head that you just showed up. As soon as I saw that, do you know what it made me think of? NBA Jam? No. There, there were a couple of those. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of which was OJ Mayo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which was sold. <laughs> yeah. You did not sell the Zebo one. No. What did OJ Mayo's mom give you for that? $400. <laughs> it cost it cost, <laughs> it cost 50 Let's put it this way. OJ, you, Ma- OJ you... Mayo and his mom paid for our drinks for the weekend. Hold on now. Whoa, I, I just saw that big head, yeah. and it made me think of you selling the OJ one. Because yeah. there were a couple of the big heads that you guys were holding up in the crowd, yeah. right? As you sat down uh, behind the, not far from behind the Grizzlies bench. Um, did you guys put a price on it, or did she just hand you $400? <laughs> no, or? she uh, – so uh, – she, it was somebody at one of or somebody else who was with us. I think it was I, Ryan. I think it was Ryan um, who was with us and OJ Mayo's mom because because he was the one sitting closest to the aisle where she was asking him, and she was like, "How much for that?" And he and he told her four hundred dollars. She goes, "All right." <laughs> oh, he did, but no he didn't know it was OJ's mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She told him. <laughs> no, you shouldn't negotiate you on price. Four hundred bucks. Well, he was making like eight million dollars a year. Yes, we can. We could have charged. We could have charged four thousand dollars if we wanted to. You know Rosa, now that we, now that you have that, we got to bring those back. And OJ's back in Memphis when he's not playing in Russia. Yeah. Yeah. So when he comes back in town, I'm telling him that. Yeah. He's gonna. Hey, He's going to get his 400 back. Well, I, <laughs> He's coming for you, Rosa. I, I don't have the 400 anymore. He got spent that weekend. <laughs> no, so we have, yeah, I've got the four. I've got the core four. We're I have, I have the core four. Sorry. The other ones we had were OJ, which obviously sold to his mom. Uh, Shane Battier, which got stolen in Oklahoma City at game one of the Thunder series. 
literally two days after game six, got stolen there. Um, who steals who's, Shane yeah, Battier? Who's, yeah. And then the yeah. line, and then the Lionel Hollins win that me and a buddy of mine ripped apart after game seven on Mother's Day when we lost to the Clippers because we were so pissed off that he started the fourth quarter with Ahmed Haddadi and so Gilbert Arenas. ripped it up? And we were so mad. They were so mad. We well, were I need so to, mad. I need y'all to bring it back. I need one of the, like, this the big heads to be like the rose of the, this next yes. gen. Yes, so Be the rose of the next gen. Well, bring yeah. back look, the Jaren, let me, Ja, Fatheads. Let me tell you about something from the – uh, past generation, too, that is going to blow your mind. Okay. So, last night, there's nothing more that I love than, walk, than watching the walk of shame that takes place amongst Laker fans. The people that are donned in their yellow LeBron James jersey. And bootleg. And they have to t-shirts. walk out of the arena just in utter disgrace. Because the team that they have oohed and awed over in the first five minutes of the game decided to be lame again and lost. And so now you have all manner of Laker fans. I mean, and they are, it is a large contingent. They, they, and look, there are a lot, and I, I, I've always framed this, there are many that are long term Laker fans of which I have never had a huge problem with those that are truly Laker fans. For many, many years, if you grew up here and you did not have a favorite team and you were a big basketball fan, and part of the reason that Memphis got a basketball team in the first place is because it was a really good NBA market. So if you attached yourself or really liked the Lakers, you know, all the way back in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s, like, and those were your teams, no big deal. But as we know, many of these individuals, we have seen them over the course of many years in Cleveland jerseys, mm-hmm. in Miami Heat jerseys, mm-hmm. in you know they're they're the player fans, and so then and there is such a weird dichotomy in Laker Nation right now. It was always, you know, the long term Laker fans, like you know, the I, I, I respected the. The Kobe guys more, you know, like they they had to like they were Kobe fans and they were Kobe fans for twenty years while he's playing in one uniform, right? The a lot of these they've had to bounce around everywhere, but you also so you do have like this, you know, meeting up of a lot of really long term fans, you know, that just they've always loved the Lakers no matter who's on that yeah. Lakers team, and then the LeBron fans. Who just like whatever team LeBron is on? Oh my God, the freaking oh, oh that's, the the fifty. Well, you don't like the Lakers. No, though. I don't like the Lakers. You like, like LeBron. LeBron. The yeah. 50 that's the Jordan. 60, he's, the, the fifty to sixty year old men who had the goat spelled out on T shirts oh, lined yeah, up last night, dude. That was disgraceful. Too they much. should never be allowed in an arena again, <laughs> <laughs> ever. Look, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I had a moment of real sadness before the game. Okay. So. I'm down, you know, uh, uh, you know, down, uh, down by the court, talking to people and whatnot. And then I look down at my watch, and I'm like, "Oh shoot, I got to get up to the pregame show." So it's probably like six twenty. Of course, we go on the air at six thirty. So I, I'm walking down the court, and I cut back up, and I and I walk up through a section in order to get back up to the concourse so I can walk over to our pregame show. And as I get to the top of the section. I hear a guy, bigger guy, big guy, and he's wearing a yellow LeBron James jersey. He's holding a big basket of you know, food and drinks and whatever else, right? And uh, the, the, the usher, who I recognize, is like, hey, how you doing? And then there's this big guy. Hey, boss man. And I'm like. <laughs> He's like, so, oh shit! Uh, no, and then, and then like I, I, I walk. I was like, he, I, I figured he'd see somebody he knew, right? Yeah. And then, because surely he's not speaking to me. <laughs> right. You're not boss man. You're not. Yeah, you're not Jay Crowder. I, I don't think I am. Okay. But he's like, hey, boss man. I keep on walking. I take a few steps. Hey, boss man. <laughs> he thinks you're the big boss man. I turn around and look at this dude, and I see this. Guys wearing a LeBron James jersey. It's Mo Spades. <laughs> and he's like, What's up? And he's like, You don't even recognize me, do you? And I look and I I'm like this, and I was like, 
Burks? Bro, it's Antonio Burks. <laughs> oh, I said, you played for us. What are we doing here? Oh, man. I'm like, this is messed up. Come on, man. I helped Antonio Burks get drafted by the Grizzlies. I remember that. That's back when famous I li- interview. It's back when I listened to his show. It's a famous interview where I had Burks on, and he said, Jerry West, come get your boy. And they did. Okay. They took him. Now, wow. obviously, it didn't work out well. He yeah. played for Fratello. He you know, had his own set of things. But it was Antonio Burks, bro. I was so disappointed. Well, he wore a grit. He played for <laughs> us. He played for Memphis. <laughs> he played for Memphis. <laughs> Isn't he like, from Memphis? Yes. I'm like, not you. <laughs> no, come on. We got to buy that man a John jersey. We, we sent Juicy J a bunch of jerseys the other day. So we got to send No you, lie. We got to get you a I couldn't jersey. believe it. I, like, I was like, Burks? I mean, he's big now. He's yeah. big. Yes. 3X, you think? No. We'll get him a 3X. I don't know. We'll get him but a 2X John jersey. I just, to see, I mean. Come on, man. That's. He played for the Grizzlies. He wore a Grizzlies jersey with his played name on the back. Played for the Tigers. Yeah. Grew up in Memphis. He's Memphis to the core. And I got to look at this guy on a yellow LeBron. <laughs> I'm like, man. You know what we should do? Go on, go on, Burks. We play the Lakers, the Warriors, that's the Celtics. We should have like a bin right by the door. When they walk out, it's where you can just drop your Lakers merch in and we can get you a Grizzly jersey. One of my favorite. You can add, you can add the next hey, to that. Too. Look, yeah. this year, yeah, but this is, how you, this is how you know I'm unconditional. I'll always love Antonio Burks. One of my favorite Memphis Tigers. Oh, I ever. loved Antonio Burks. One of my favorite Memphis Tigers I'll, I'll, ever. I will, one of my favorite, it is one of my favorite games because I believe it was Garcia and Taquan Dean were playing at Louisville. And it was all the Rick Patino press. Yeah. And it was the game was at Louisville. And freaking Antonio Burks was a one man press breaker. Just beat them up and down the floor, broke that press by himself. Uh, and the Tigers like won by like seventeen. Just beat the crap out of him there. He was t- tough as nails. Yes. I mean I love Burks. I love I loved Burks, but that he was Memphis. That kid's Memphis <laughs> my, all the way through. And then I imagine my level of disappointment to see Hollywood Burks last night. Yeah, I could, it, was, I, it was like it was like uh, when he went Hollywood Hogan. Yeah, I wouldn't, so it felt I wouldn't, to me. I wouldn't be able I'm to like, handle oh, that. I'm like, oh, he'll turn. No. I wouldn't yeah. be able to handle that. This man said, hey, boss, man. Yeah. You don't even recognize me. I said, oh, my God. Oh, no. you got to be kidding me. He I flip, can't take this. He flipped, bro. Yeah. Hollywood Burks. I can't. I, I, can, I, I wouldn't be able to handle that. I can't handle yeah. that. The game last night. So, I have a lot of observations. I talked about it this morning with uh, Kevin O'Connor on the mismatch uh, from last night. I, one of the things was when we were talking about the game in the pregame show last night, I said they're in a little bit of an odd situation with how they've been tinkering with their lineups because their best situation is in many cases – uh, uh, Anthony Davis at the five. But this is precisely why Anthony Davis does not prefer or has not preferred throughout his career playing at the five. Because when you do, you have to go up against guys like Steven Adams. <laughs> and you have to fight every time the ball comes off the rim. And it is intensely taxing and intensely annoying, I can imagine, right? <laughs> like, if you're a big goon, too, then you can go ahead and tussle with him, no, right? Like, that's, uh, that's how you like to play. But So then you have that, and then on the other side, you've got yeah. Jaron Jackson Jr., who's like the young, unicorny, you know, space the floor all the way out, whatever. But you watch last night, and Ooh. you Ooh. have... To his chest, baby. You have, to me... Oh, my if gosh, you, that's your king. And Hold we... That. We talked about the, you know, the, uh, you know how he's gotten bigger and more muscular yeah. and whatever, and I've heard people criticize him. I've heard people talk about him, but I will say it is intensely noticeable when you think about it in this, you know, context. He's twenty-seven years old, right? Mm-hmm. That's what Giannis is. That's what Giannis is. Yeah, and he has now. I feel like, and this is just my opinion, you know, I know he's still putting up raw numbers, but if you watch the games, he's not the devastating player. He's just not. No. And I think my uh, my opinion just from watching is you've gotten in a weird spot where you're in between. 
right? You ain't big and strong and tough to be bodying people and fight with Steven Adams. Steven Adams had eight offensive rebounds last night. The Grizzlies had like 14. So you're not, you ain't, you ain't big enough for that. But you've also gained this, you know, muscle and weight, whatever. So you're not, you're like in between. It's lost a little bit of your athleticism. You, you're yeah, in yeah, between yeah. the yeah. Adams and Jared. Yeah. Like it actually kind of exposes it, right? Cause and even Jaron tomato chested him last yes, night. Yes, sir. Tomato chest. Yeah. Dude. Tomato take that, chest. Take that shoulder. I and watched. They just laid it in. Yeah. And I'm like, so to me, you should be the mega athletic, finishing above the rim. You know, I switch on to a guard and stay with him. Condor block like, shots. Yeah, yeah, like that whole thing. Yeah. Cause he ain't really. He's not banging with you. Like, he's not that big, you know, but he's also, he doesn't have that, like, and he's not stretching the floor at all. Like, I feel like maybe, again, I don't want to turn this into, like, 80s muscles are the reason he's the pro- but he does not have that same touch, like, to space the floor. He doesn't shoot threes, and he also, really, and, you know, there was that stat last week about, like, that mid-range of which he's dwelled for so many years of his career. He was, like... Of qualifying players that had shot X number, he was like last. He used to be automatic from that. He was like last yeah, he used of to be, those. So I do cash. wonder if it's like kind of screwed up your touch. Two, I, I actually, and I've heard Bill Simmons talk about this. Like Now seeing him in person, I am on the side of you should just go be the mega athletic, yeah. space the floor at, at, guy. But, I mean, this whole getting big and try, like, bro, you're, you're, you're never going to be – the guy that's tussling with Steven Adams. Have you seen the three-point numbers on him, on Davis? Like, this is from the Stat Muse, yeah. which, by the way, fantastic. Yeah. Love the stuff. Shots on them. They got to get Jaren's hair so right Anthony, there. Anthony, this is for his career. Career from three. The bubble playoffs, 38.3% from three. The rest of his career, 29.9%. Yeah. But he spaced the floor by knocking down those, yeah. like, long twos. Yeah, he can. Yeah. He can't hit he, those. It anymore. was automatic. Yeah. No, no, he can't it's, hit those. He would be no, he, look at the numbers this year. He was last of the qualifying no, players. It's, it's I, crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. No. And so, and t- him not being amazing. Yes. It forces LeBron to play 37 minutes a game. Yes. Now, think about this. He played 37 minutes a game last night. Okay. LeBron did. Yeah. He was plus two. So that means, look, you don't have to be Mr. Math like Devin. Yeah. Yeah. That's 11 minutes he wasn't on the court. It's yes. a 48-minute game. Yes. The Grizzlies won the game by 13. They got outscored 15 points in the 11 minutes he was not on the court. Yeah. 15. Like, it's not even like they barely lost. They got slaughtered with him not on the court. Like, and it's like, how? How is he having to play 37 minutes at year 19? It's crazy to me. Yeah. Truly. Yes. And they don't really have, you know, like, the, the crazy thing is last night at that game, you, there was the buzz. You saw those Laker fans. They were having fun those mm-hmm. first 10 minutes of yeah, the game. Yeah, when Melo's hitting the threes and doing all that. And I'm going to be honest with you. LeBron was like engaged yeah, on was. the defensive end, yeah. and he w- and he like had like this kind of like look at his eyes, and I was like, oh no, because yeah. we were already short-handed with no Dylan Brooks and, and not Jaren having got, the Jaren got two quick ones. Jaren, Jaren got, got two, two quick, quick ones, ones, and you have Dylan, who right before the game it's announced yeah. he's not going to be able to play. You don't really have big wings now. They instituted Jared Culver last night, who hey. got his opp- opportunity, who I'll get to in a moment. But oddly enough, I was like, oh, boy. They've got the engaged LeBron, and if he is going to be like this, attacking on both ends, this could, be, this could be rough. And then the benches came in, and it flipped. Yes. And then you ended up at the end of the first quarter. You're, like, in a game. Yep. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, they really – that's one of those where they could have, like – Really gotten on top of you, gotten several stops, and now now they're busting you up. And we've seen that happen. We yes. saw it happen with the Heat. We saw it happen with Phoenix. But instead, they did what they do, 
many times throughout the season. And in the absence of a dominant Anthony Davis, and in the absence of, and this is most important, though. This is most important. Zebo's teams, who he's going to join us later, that, you know, I covered those veteran teams. Obviously, I watched for many years um, the Grizzlies be that young, sorry ass team that you'd feel so great about it for three quarters, and then the other team turns it up in the fourth quarter. And so I'm well aware that in many cases, that's taking place. It's happening. It, this is how Houston gets their wins. It's how Oklahoma City gets their wins in large part, right? Because teams look at them. They look at them young. They say, all right, we'll, we'll turn it on when we have to. And then these teams, they start playing better, and they start getting confidence, and they start feeling good about themselves, and the crowd's roaring and whatever, and next thing you know, you can't turn it up. But the Lakers, here's the difference. So they're like, all right, well, basically we'll try hard for 10 minutes, and then we'll just win this game. Yeah. But they keep getting caught. And why? Because in order to do that, and this is the way the Grizzlies functioned, which drove me crazy. You'd be playing against some rat team. You'd play Charlotte. And you're down 90 to 80 with about four minutes left or five minutes left. And then they wouldn't score again and you'd win 93 to 90. And the way you can do that is if you can just say, the other team's not scoring. You're yeah. done. We're going to try. And that, that's the way. You're, You're not, not scoring. You won't get another bucket. They're not good enough defensively to do it. They're not. That's the trick. They're not. If you're a veteran team that wants to, you know, if those are the waters yep. that you want to occupy, you got to be able to stop people. That's that's the other and they can't stop you. And no. the other thing too with that, I was I think I was told Devin before the show. I said that the thing with them last year was like they were so good defensively last. They were the best team in the league Just defensively. Lock you down. And so when LeBron and AD both had it, separate injuries, they had already had such a cushion yep. that they were still able to make up make the postseason. The way they are now, if one of those guys ends up really going down for like a ex- super extended period of time, like three months or three weeks, a month or whatever, like, bro, they're done. Like, they may be I, done. I, I would just say, look, if they go out and they play with tenacity and they play with focus, they're going to win a boatload of games. Yeah. The, the trick is, they don't. They don't. Nah. They don't. And then they don't. They and play like old teams, like a lot of older teams do. Yeah, they, like. they, they, it's, it's, it is. And I had one of, one of the guys in their traveling party actually say this to me last night. He said, it is expend the least amount of energy you can and still get a win. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And they get caught. Yeah. Like over and over again. Now, that's what we know. They view it in many of these cases, like especially with a team like that, they view it as like a 365-day yes. operation. In the playoffs, they're just not going to pass to the other guys. That's what they did <laughs> two years ago. And there was a span of about three minutes last night where I was like, oh, crap, here they come. Right, they're going to turn it on now. And they, if they run the LeBron drives to the basket, pick and roll with Davis, and he lobs it up, I mean, you don't – you can't do anything – you know what I mean? Yeah. The problem is they just screw around. Yeah. Most part. And then they like some of their turnovers last night were just like just threw the ball like right to the Grizzlies. But like. the other thing, LeBron's face after when they they were already down like whatever it was like eleven. But there's like maybe two minutes left. I think and I Westbrook takes that three Dude, when he took that three. <laughs> LeBron is like, what am I doing here? Hey, like, what is the point? Because I think, didn't you tweet like the Grizzlies just need a dagger? Yes. They need a dagger. And then Desmond Bay, and then the, ba- bow, 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 the, bow, the bow. dagger was the Westbrook three that he just missed. That he just, it was like, what the hell? There's no Bing back. bong, Desmond Bain. Dude, Desmond Bain. Bing bong. I, Bain train. One oh. of the guys, uh, uh, <laughs> choo, choo. Their, uh, their TV sideline reporter texted me in the first quarter. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, no, that there it is. In the last, in, in the in the first quarter of last night's game, their TV sideline reporter, who I know, texted me and he said, "How in the hell did you guys get pain at thirty? B- because there are twenty nine other dumb teams, no. stupid teams. It's it's well, this is age no, old. It's, it's, the, the NBA is ageist. Yes, it's the same reason Dray- Draymond Green fell to thirty five. There's tons like, of these guys. There's yes. tons of these guys, right? They're ageist." 
because what what happens is they say, yeah, but he's 23, and and what is this 19 year old who's got these uh, you know freakish measurements and everything else? What's he gonna look like in four years? And unfortunately, uh, the guy that is not very has not shown much at 19, and then you say, what's he gonna look like in four years? Many times you get four years later, and he's still not any good. <laughs> You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, he's not any good. Yeah. Whereas the guy that you already know is good, he has proven he is good, that's the guy. That get, and interestingly enough, he, he, he did bring up a good point because the Lakers obviously have been good for so long. Um, he said to me, he goes, it's absolutely right. And he goes, and they had hit on some of those themselves. And he said, it's exactly how we got Larry Nance. It's exactly how we got Josh Hart. It's exactly how we got Kyle Kuzma. They're all late. Yeah. All junior, late. Junior, first, senior yeah. players. Junior, all seniors. All late first rounders, all totally legitimate NBA guys. Absolutely. Rotation guys. Right? Yep. Yeah. And they got them late. Yep. And Bannon got no fear, man. He has like no fear. Like, usually, like two, second year guys, when they see like Braun or somebody, they like take a step back. This man, Jack. Oh, no, he drove at Going drove at right you. Did. Late. I still thought that I saw one of the funniest ones was. The one that Tillman got on LeBron, and it, I don't even—I don't think because LeBron was engaged. I still thought LeBron was engaged the, the whole for most of the night, like he was engaged. But it was—it was Tillman late in the fourth quarter. Tillman cut across the lane, and Conchar just whipped the pass to him, and Tillman got it and laid it in. And LeBron was like, "What the hell?" Like, hey, he, shout like, out just, Jitty, shout like, out just Jitty didn't too, even man. did not know Conchar could make that pass. Did not know Tillman could cut like that. Shout like, out Jitty because he, he was, that second what quarter was that? he was. Electric man. It, it's and one of the things with their particular team is it's it's an age old thing that we've talked about a hundred thousand times. There's stars and there's role players, and they don't have you know you have to establish roles. And this was it was an interesting case study when you watched last night because you can't say when their bench came in and then the Grizzlies bench came in. It's that that's not one of those where you can say. Oh well, they were short-handed or whatever. Because the Grizzlies bench. I mean, they're, they're, there's collections of five guys that have never played together. Okay, but somehow they all know their role. They know what they are supposed to be doing and kind of how they fit. And then they play together, no matter what the collection yeah. of players is. And you watch them. And as I said, anytime LeBron's not on the floor, and it's like some of it is just weird because it's like, all right, so I get Malik Monk, who's He's he's destined to be you you'd hope like the Lou Williams type yeah, the heater Jerry off Smith, the bench right? yeah. but you bring him in with like Carmelo that's what Carmelo thinks yeah, he is he's yeah. the heater right <laughs> or whatever and then you bring him in with Dwight and what's he doing and it's just weird it's it's a weird collection for sure and it's not just the natural like Caruso knew what his role was yeah. and Caldwell Pope knew what his role was and Kuzma knew what his role was and. Like these guys don't know they don't, they don't have role players, yeah. right? Guys that just like keep the ball moving and kind of complement what they have. Yeah. You know? I mean Wayne Ellington's one of those dudes, but he's just like he's a hundred. He's a hundred years yeah, old. Like a shell of but he also but this and this is the difference. It's the difference between Bain and Ellington. Because people forecasted Bain to be an Ellington type. Yeah. Shooter, yeah. Once you, but once you're a shooter that doesn't do anything, but then you're just stay at home, and that's why Bain and his level of improvement and being able to go to the basket has been has reaped such yes. insane benefits. Because now you're not the guy that I just got to close out on. Yeah. If I close out on Wayne Ellington, it's over. Yeah. The play's over. You don't want to like for him. Yeah. He, he's never yeah. driving on me no. ever, and that is. A real detriment. Yeah, yeah. It's fine for spacing. That was Wayne Ellington's first made three since uh, 2015. <laughs> Shut up. Last night. Stat Muse tweeted that. So. Look, yeah. I, all, all I know was you had all these guys coming in, and I do want to speak on Jarrett Culver. Sometimes, and I'm not saying that the Culver thing is going to be, like there's going to be some massive boon, but I will tell you, A, I absolutely loved what I saw last night. He went and he was immediate. The second he checked in the game, he got a steal. He's in the mix. He's diving on the ground. He's making some shots. He's hustling. And this is a guy that you know very well could not be happy about the way things have gone. He, you know, he gets drafted high, goes to Minnesota, 
doesn't go well. He's a sixth overall pick. They, they, you know, people, he's abandoned, right? Like, I mean, they go and they sign Malik Beasley in free agency. They draft Anthony Edwards, number one overall. Like, you're just, you're done. Yeah, like, And then he's like not even in the rotation at all on a, what is a bad team. He's not even playing. And the coaches got switched out a couple different times. And so then he comes to Memphis, and it's like, okay, now I'm in, you know, this contract here, basically, you know, to see what my future is going to be. And you're just not playing at all. Next thing you know, you're playing down at South Haven. And you're playing for the hustle. And, you know, Tony Allen used to always talk about this when you come in. Uh, get re- uh, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And sometimes, and we'll see, sometimes you are an injury away. It is the story of Tony Allen, as we've chronicled 100,000 times. If Xavier Henry never gets hurt, maybe that never even happens, you know? Maybe the 2011 thing never happens unless Rudy goes down and they add Shane Battier to the mix. Maybe DeAnthony Melton never happens unless you catch some injuries, right? Maybe, I mean, it's happened many, many times here. And it's like, I'm not telling you that Culver can end up having the impact of these guys. What I am saying is, it is not the first time that we have seen somebody that is buried, that nobody thinks anything of, and gets their opportunity for one reason or another. And in this case, it was because you needed a big wing and Dylan Brooks in protocol. And they play themselves into a spot. And that kid earned himself some minutes last night. Yeah. Because he was really good. It's those credit too to like to them like building a roster of dudes that all can hoop. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like like, like some teams they have dudes that are like 12, 13, 14, 15. That if you put them out there, you're like, what the what the hell is that guy out there? And, well, and, but and, and I will say this: you also those not only do they have to be able to, it speaks to you know character evaluation and what you bring in. Because a guy like that, if it were me or if it were so, you know. And he does the big, you know, he's yeah. always, you know, trust God, keep working. The work's going to pay off. Enjoy this journey. It is a journey. you got to think, you know, you got to step back a big picture, whatever. But a guy like that, you could become insanely resentful. Yeah. It's like, bro, what? I mean, look at, look at the situation I was just in. And now somehow I've gone to a worse situation. I play behind Zaire Williams. I play behind, you know, whoever. Like, I, I don't even get to touch the floor. And now, because of a couple of injuries, because of a couple of uh, uh, you know, guys in protocol, he's needed. And he was super valuable last night. He impacted that game. There's no question. Like, he impacted that game last night. Even like Tilly, like, like, like all those dudes, like Tilly, the Conchars, like I feel like you can put a dude, any dude out there, and like they can, like. Well, and we, especially with Dylan out now. Yeah. Even with Dylan, we need big wings. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What if we had one that, like, can give us minutes? Let's see. It's possible. Yeah. It happened with Melton. Nobody thought anything of Melton, and then he came in, and it's like, whoa, hold on now. Yeah. Why wasn't this guy playing before? Well, in Jerry Culver's situation, because when Dylan gets frustrated and he gets the fouls against Luca the other night, like, bro, you don't have anybody within a foot of Luca. Like, at least this guy's got size. At least he's tall, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's active. He's a nimble guy. And he's active. And so, go out there and make some plays. And so, I'm hoping he did earn himself some minutes, yeah. honestly. And I think he did because of kind of where he could fill in on the uh, – and, and Brevin said this last night. He said, look, if you're leaving this arena, and he goes – and there's many times you're leaving the arena, he goes – if you ever walk by, and this has happened several times throughout the year, if you ever walk by that practice court late. Oh, he's in there. And it's Kurt Franklin playing. He's in there shooting threes. Yeah. Over and over and over. A game in which he put on his uniform, sat on the end of the bench, cheered on the team, never played, and then the game's over, and at 10 o'clock he's in there just shooting over and and over and over again. Yeah. So he's you the know, one I always hear when I'm leaving. It's cold. He's the, if you hear Kurt Franklin playing, like Kurt I, Franklin, I hear like music him. from that practice court all the time when I leave. That, and I'm, Jared, Jared, I'm, like, I'm like, who is in there? It's Jarek Culver. Okay, yeah, he's yeah every night. And the, like, it helps you like the hustle. He played with the hustle the other night. 
Like you get you get reps. Like they play like games with the, the coaches and stuff. So That's they right. Get reps. So like. They staying ready. What so worried cool. the, the thing that worried me about a couple of the the hustle games is because I knew he he started off slow in them, and I my worry was okay. Well, when you you get your opportunity with the Grizzlies, you're you're not going to have that chance. Like you're going to be expected because you're going to be you're in, you're an end of the bench guy. When you come in, they're going to need a spark right away from you because that's probably why you're getting in or their injuries or whatever. And he w- and he wasn't doing that right with the hustle. It was taking him too long to really get going. Like both yeah. times he played well for the hustle, it was the second half when he got better. Um, but he was great right off the bat. Yeah, last he was, they're always good in the interview time. session last night too. Yeah, he, he was. was good. Yeah, he's always good at the podium. Even uh, our guy Jaron was great too. He. Uh, so yeah, what was the water Jaren, thing about? Jaren's always good. Where did that come from? So someone asked, uh, "What's been the difference in this ten game run?" Because in this ten game run, Jaron is uh, been going crazy. Like he's consistent, playing like the, yeah, the yep. Jaron we know he is. And someone asked, uh, "What's been the reason behind it?" So he gave credit to his, his hydration, um, staying hydrated. And then did he say? Did he, did somebody talk to him about it? What is hydration? Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. No, because it's obviously it, somebody should have followed up on that. Because it's, it, he's acting as if this is a new thing that helped him greatly. And so you'd like to know where that came from. Yeah. Who advised him on, hey, man, you should be drinking a lot more water. And maybe and Zaire. maybe you would reap the benefits from it. Zaire's the king of hydration. He's the, the captain. Zaire of, is he, the, the hydration king. Yeah, he's, so he may have been spreading the, spreading the love of hydration on the team, and Jaren wanted to get a, be a part of it. Totally possible. And now, he was, now he's playing like the Jaren. Like, where is that stat muse? 20 points per last 10 games. 20 points per game, five rebounds, 50% from the field, 38% on six three-point attempts a game. And he tomato-chested Anthony Davis. A couple times. tomato chest. I, I will yes, tell sir. you, Pete, Pete Pranica, Pete had – I don't think he meant it to be this funny, but I had – I just said because I did hustle, I said I watched the game back this morning. And when he to, when Jared tomato-chested Carmelo Anthony, Pete just goes, Carmelo Anthony just wants nothing to do with guarding Jared Jackson Jr. <laughs> <laughs> I was like – he don't want to have anything to do with guarding anybody. <laughs> no, he, he really doesn't. It's okay. not. Jer- it's not. That's not. It wasn't a oh, Jared thing. No, no, yeah. He doesn't want to guard Contour. He doesn't want to guard. He doesn't want to guard anybody. The, no. that, that, that's been. Uh, what, like, what, what am I doing? Two thousand three. That's been Carmelo Anthony not wanting to guard since two thousand three. No, they play. They play a lot of church league ball. Yes. You know what I mean? They're like yeah. the old guys that you play at the church. They like. They could drive on you every time, but they just want to take step back threes <laughs> yeah. and not really like. They just kind of jog back. Like yeah, they they turned up. Even Jaw was like tweet live tweeting. He I am was. here for Jaw live tweeting. Dude, he was live tweeting the hustle game Hilarious. too. He had both I games going because he was live tweeting the hustle too. I'm here for him live tweeting games. Hilarious. I wish we could tweet our games like take over my job for the day. Man, you know how much he's gonna hate not being at that Murray game tonight. tonight I hate yeah, it's the John Murray Classic. It really yeah, is. It is. It's it's man it sucks. And you know what? I I ran into some Murray people already last night here. downtown. Yeah. Um, after the game. I walked over to the West End to meet up with a friend, and uh, there was a bunch of Murray people over there then, and I think the whole damn city's coming. That's why, no. Like, are. to this game. Like, I talked to one of my friends earlier this week, and she was like. They're just going to shut down the lights in Murray, and, yeah. and they're all going <laughs> to descend, yeah. descend on Memphis. Drive down to Memphis for the weekend, because there's like, I think they did like a package where you can buy the Murray ticket and the Grizz ticket for tomorrow. Oh. No, so, you, you, no you, you know what it really is? It's going like, to be a freaking huge Murray weekend. I remember <laughs> this. It was like I met a guy that's uh, having a bachelor party here who went to Murray. Him and all of his Murray friends are all meeting here to do the – they went to the game last night. Yeah. It's a great bachelor party weekend. Went to the game last night, going to the Murray-Memphis game tomorrow night, and then they're going Saturday to the, uh, to the, to the Rockets game. That's Dude, pretty that's good. Whole, pretty great. That's a good weekend. No, Murray, the, it is like the whole town's coming. This this also used to happen in a, a high school that was it was close by. Remember Tyler Hansbro mm. from Poplar yeah, Bluff, Pop Missouri, Bluff, right yeah. up the road. Like it was like whenever they tried, it's like the whole freaking town shut down and just followed him wherever he went. Dude, yeah, it's gonna be lit tonight. It's smart. It's smart to package that too. Yeah. They sold it as a package. I think they sold it as a package. They, they sold it like sure. you can Sha- you can get Sha- a ticket to tonight and to tomorrow. Shaq Buchanan will be there. I'm sure Dino Dino will be in He'll the be house. In the building. Man, yeah. Dino is so funny. That dude yeah, talks so much. Oh, shit. somebody said there's a Murray alumni party thing on Bill Street tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> dude. <laughs> well, there's a Zebo parade. Yeah, yeah. There's Zebo Wait, parade. are they gonna are they gonna collide? The Murray alumni and the Zebo parade. <laughs> well, it's not a Zebo parade. It's like yeah. a winter parade, right, or something. Yeah, something it? like he's gonna be like the Grand Marshal or something. Yeah, for like a winter parade or yeah. whatever. Yeah, but no, dude. Murray Murray's really about to be like Memphis for. 
That crowd's going to be packed. 48 tonight. hours. That crowd's going to be packed. There's going to be a big Murray crowd tonight there, too. Maybe yeah. more. All right, let's get our break in now. I'll find out where Zebo is. Chris Farnan. Show. WinBet, the official sportsbook partner of the Memphis Grizzlies, is Tennessee's premier digital sports betting app. They're bringing you the action of real money sports betting right in the palm of your hand with some of the best odds in the game. From boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport, they have what you need to win. Sign up today and use the promo code GRIZZ400, G-R-I-Z-Z, 400, and after placing your first $5 wager, you'll receive $400 to bet with. There's no better way to enjoy basketball than with some extra winnings in your pocket to use for all your favorite bets. And be sure to check out the WinBet Lounge at FedEx Forum the next time you're around to catch the Grizzlies. Betting is a team sport. Join the WinBet team and bet with the best. Must be physically located in Tennessee and 21 years of age or older to participate. If you or someone you know needs assistance with a gambling problem, call the Tennessee Red Line at 1-800-889-9789. Something we've been wishing for, obviously, missed fans for most of this past season and now being able to have in the arena to you know be able to cheer us on for us to you know feed off their energy it's so like it's, it's big time for us. Grant makes his move, spins in the paint, turns, puts it up, puts it in. John Morant. Everything I do when I step out on the floor, not only repping you know me, my family, and I'm also repping Memphis as a whole. And like I said, I wear it with pride, and you know everything I do is you know for Memphis. HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC, Tennessee State, Lane, Lamorne Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is a spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. Roser, what'd you learn this week? I've never come in here and just been like disappointed in Alabama. <laughs> that was so embarrassing. LSU sucks. And they just let them push them around. Like that, if, if LSU had a competent quarterback, they win the game. Yeah, That's yeah. embarrassing for Alabama. Right. That's some pride. CJ, what'd you learn this the week? Embarrassing Big Al. <laughs> It's an elephant with pride. Get your sports betting picks and trends with Lang Whitaker and Rob Fisher, the odds couple. Fridays on GrindCityMedia.com and YouTube. Horseshoe Tunica is your place to watch all the Memphis Grizzlies games. You'll catch every dribble, every pass, and every swoop. Whether you're looking to grab some food or meet up with friends, Horseshoe is the place to be. Come in today and see why Horseshoe is your favorite place to watch all the action. Horseshoe Tunica, official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies. Must be 21 or older to gamble or attend events. No one to stop before you start. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. Grizz fans, the official Grizzlies mobile app is your key to the game. It's an all-in-one experience. Keep track of a team with news, social media, and team information. Plus, you can log into Grind City Media for articles, videos, podcasts, and streaming content like the Chris Vernon Show and Rise and Grind. You can see what's going on at FedEx Forum and use the app as your ticket and mobile wallet for contact-free payment in the arena. The official Grizzlies mobile app, your key to the game. Kanye versus Drake. Roser, I talked about it in Rise and Grind. I'm going to let you have this moment right now. Uh, Drake is lame. Um, he just is. Kanye West makes music that will live on forever. Drake does not. Join me, Megan Triplett, and John Roser every Monday as we discuss our favorite three topics and give you our stances from stories from the weekend that was. It's Three Point Stance weekly on GrindCityMedia.com and on YouTube. Three vocal powerhouses. One epic night. It's Maxwell's Night Tour. With Anthony Hamilton. Come on. Tour, starring Maxwell, featuring Anthony Hamilton and Joe. Visit bpctickets.com. Brought to you by the Black Promoters Collective. The game before that was 32-21. I did write it on my hand. Look at CJ. I wrote it on my hand. 40 
to 28. How do I not say anything about that? I can't just talk to you. I'm like, did you write that on your hand? Are we done writing things on our hands? At this point, this is always here. Yeah. And there's this amazing thing called a notes app. <laughs> Let me check my Palm Pilot. Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan. Live daily at 8 a.m. on GrindCityMedia.com. What's up, y'all? This is Chase Rice hanging outdoors with an ice cold Mountain Dew. You know, it's easy to tell who really loves the outdoors. For one thing, there's a rack on your car and a hitch on the back of your truck. There's a garage full of toys from wakeboards to dirt bikes. And there's a cooler full of Mountain Dew, always at the ready. Because when it's time to get out and do, you know, hit the lake or the deer stand, a cooler of Mountain Dew, that's as important a piece of outdoor gear as your four-wheeler or your fishing rod. Mountain Dew. Do the do. It's just a few cocktails at happy hour. There aren't any cops around. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. Hey, I can hold my liquor. I drink and drive all the time. If you put away some drinks, put away your keys. Fans don't let fans drive drunk. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Hungry as a bear? Pick up the Grizzlies fan favorite Crunchwrap Supreme Combo and you'll score free tacos. Purchase the Crunchwrap Supreme Combo at your local Taco Bell through December 12th and you'll score a key tag good for a free seasoned beef crunchy or soft taco on future visits. What's better than a Grizzlies win? Free tacos at Taco Bell. Stop by today to get yours. Key tag available at participating Memphis area Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Free item valid per disclaimer on back of key tag. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com, presented by WinBet. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. All eyes on me, got the whole world away. Say I'm in my bag, that's an understate. My wings got a mask, so they gonna hate. The pack got me going like a runaway. On beats, I go down like I'm from the bay. Let me demonstrate. Watch me float to the bank, I levitate. I'm in my zone, NCAA. Straight to the top, high elevate, scoring on every play. Yeah. Uh, top notch play, I ain't never been better. Yeah. Thanks to everyone who got it, now I got a vendetta. Yeah. I knew I was the man before anyone told me. Yeah. And the job ain't done till I hold that trophy. Look, uh, ball so hard, they don't know what the rate me. Yeah. Uh, pedal to the metal. Chris Vernon Show! Oh, and the man of the hour has arrived. Look at him. Man, I'm here. Oh, I stuck here. Too. Blessed, man. Yeah, you're listening to your teeth, man. <laughs> Endless Entertainment, man. <laughs> Coming up, man. Check us out. Zach Randolph is here. The number is going up in the rafters tomorrow. Does it feel real to you? Not yet, man. It's like, I guess it might hit me tomorrow when it happened, but man, just coming, being a young boy, just, you never thought of that, you know, where I'm from, you know what I mean? Going in the rafters and, man, you might see a tear come down tomorrow. <gasps> yeah. No. Big fella, might, you might see some tears. When's the last time you cried? Man, I cry all the time. You do? Yeah, when I think about my mom and my brother. You do cry? Yeah. So, you know, all you know, all men shed tears. So they ain't, you know, I ain't gonna sit here and act like, you know. Oh, then you know, we're getting like, oh, hey, no, man. Then yeah. that 50 goes Yeah, big up. fella might shed some tears, you know? Oh, I can't wait. So, I wanna see it. Yeah. I, you know what? I was thinking about this as I was thinking about the whole, you know, when it when it does when they, they have the banner and then it all gets raised up. Uh-huh. I have never asked you this in over a decade. I don't even know why you wear 50. Where did it come from in the first place? Because obviously it's very significant yeah. that 50 is going up. The name of the documentary is 50 for the city. Yeah. I've never heard you say why you wear that number in the first place. Man, you know what? It's just really, I had got that number when I was young and I just stayed with it. Like they gave me that number in middle school when I first started playing basketball. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to keep 50. And It's a weird number to get yeah. in middle school, too, because it's yeah. usually 1 through 11, right? <laughs> yeah, and I had 50 in middle school. So Did you, you know, wear 50 in high school? Yep, I wore 50 in high school, too. 
So it's like kind of like a thing where, you know, I was like, I'm going to rep this 50. You know, I've been had it all my life. And there's a lot of good players that wore, you know, the Admiral wore 50. Um, a couple more good players wore 50. So just trying to, you know, do my own lane and uh, represent that 50. I'd have to go back. Did you ever have to wear a different number in the NBA? Um, when I first got drafted, I had number six, and they switched it to number 50. I think um, Brian Grant had 50. Did you have to pay him for it? Nah, he he had uh, just got he had just got traded when I came. Oh, gotcha. So I had, had a chance. So to you get had number 50. six for a minute. Yep. And any of the other teams? Nah, just fifty always. Every time you yep. walked in and you said, "I want 50. Yep. And no, <laughs> no problem. And it was just because you had gotten into middle school. There is no other significance. You just stuck really. with it. Yep, just stuck with it. You say, this wow. It's fifty. And I'm gonna be fifty, and I'm gonna make this fifty count. And <laughs> turn into something. <laughs> You got a bunch of buddies that are coming in tomorrow night or yeah. that are going to be here tomorrow night. How much input did you have on this whole celebration that's going to be going on? Man, just a little bit. You know what I mean? The organization, they do a great job. They've been doing a great job. Um, and, um, you know, they're running it by me and um, the plans, and it's great, man. You got some rappers? It's a surprise. Some artists, right, that are going to be showing up? Yeah. You got the whole you got the whole night going on tomorrow yeah. night. Yeah, man. It's going to be a big night, man. It's a big night for uh, myself, the city, the organization, the fans. So, man, it's exciting. Do you feel odd about it, the idea that there's – you're right? Like, cause yeah, it's not – It's different. Yeah. You've never been – No. And you never were. I remember when it was, you know – I was here for the whole time you were here, mm -hmm. and that was a – it was like a big deal. Same way it was with Mike last year. That first time you made an all-star team, that was a big deal to you, man, because it was like, all right, I'm there with all the best players. I'm finally yeah. recognized. They all – every time they do a power forward list, they got me behind 50 guys. They got me behind Stoudemire, Dirk, and, <laughs> and anybody could – Bosh, and anybody comes to the league. Yep. And then it was like, all right, somebody is recognizing yeah. this now. I'm getting to this all-star team. But you've never been like a ton of accolades guy. And, like, this is – outside of, like, the Hall of Fame, this is as good an accolade. In fact, there's probably some guys that would just as soon have their number retired as get a Hall of Fame jacket one day, Man, right? I don't know if it's, it's, Every guy that's in the Hall of Fame, is, they, I don't is, know. They, is there a number I, up? I'm doubtful because some of those guys bounced around everywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, you know, like you said, just getting that up and having your name up, man, and going up. You know, from what I've been through, All-Star. I should have made the All-Star team in Portland, like, you know, at least four or five times. But, you know, they always – my numbers was right there with the best of the guys. But now yeah. it's different. You know, you don't have to win. But back then – you know, I'd be like, why am I not making an all-star team? You know, I talk to the PR guy and organization, and they tell me, because you're not winning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now in today's game, it's not that. You know what I mean? So, right. you know, I feel like I should, you know, I'm, I should have been an all-star more than twice. And, um, you know, I'm a little rough around the edges, so, you know what I mean? So, but, <laughs> you know, but I, I felt like I deserved it, man. It, it was great. I made it, and, you know, a couple times. And, you know what? God had it for me to make it in Memphis, and it wouldn't be no better way. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's how everything played out with the All-Stars and, you know, just all in God's hand. And, man, it's how he wanted it. Why do you think it worked? Because just the people see, you know, how to, how I fit in. Like like you said, how, it worked it like that because they see realness. They see genu genuineness. And they see a player just working hard. You know what I mean? And um, they can see, the, the, see my heart. So it just worked out like you said, man. And um, I wouldn't have traded for nothing in the world. Yeah. So when you when you watch the documentary, what stood out to you? <laughs> it's weird man, to just, watch it all back, right? Yeah, man. It just man, it really just gave me chills, man. Tears coming to my eyes, just especially the part you know with mom and you know just in the community and you know all this stuff. Um, it really touched me, you know, seeing mom in the stands and you know all them, the clips. And man, just a great job, man. They did a organization did a great job and you know um mike he did a great great job and everybody monica just everybody been a part of this man and um the documentary was great and, um it's gonna be lifetime you know it's gonna be something that's gonna be legendary my kids can watch my grandkids and you know their kids so it's always gonna be around so i'm very appreciative and i'm thankful for that they did that for me one of the things i wanted to ask you is when you when i'm watching that and i'm watching that opening press conference 
And there is even some clips in there about like the whole your past and mm-hmm. how do we know that your past isn't coming with you? And there's been and you know that the Portland guys were killing you. Yeah, they were right. Portland, Jason Quick, he was calling in. And it was the Casano, <laughs> <Tell, laughs> John Casano. Yeah, trying, telling everybody Casano was trying to. Yeah, yeah trying. you 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 were bring, you you were going to bring the riffraff <laughs> to Memphis, and we should all lock, lock our doors. They call, right. I had left Portland and went to New York and L.A. and they still was <laughs> talking about how bad of a guy Damn. you were. So you're having to, you're you're answering these questions. I wondered, do you remember what that was like and whether you left there like nervous? Like, what, hold on now, like I just got I just got traded to this place. I just did my opening press conference and it's all about. You know, me, my character, my past, what people have read, what some guy from Portland has called in on set on the radio about me, whatever it be. And do you remember, do you remember if you were nervous at the time after that? Like, geez, man, this isn't off to the greatest of start. Man, you know, when I was coming in, I already had a chip on my shoulder and everything just from how, you know, it played out with me. Because I only was, when I got traded from Portland, I was only in New York for half a season, a season. Right. Then I went to Clippers for half a season. So that's a season and a half. Then I ended up in Memphis. So, yep. you know, I was traded, but I only stayed on teams for such a short period. Yeah. But I, I had a chip on my shoulder. You know what I mean? Like, I felt like, like you said, I was giving away. I felt like, you know what I mean? I had to reinvent myself and reinvent myself. And coming to Memphis gave me the perfect chance. And um, like I said, man, it was God's plan. You know what I mean? Nothing else, you know, how it worked out. And, you know, just to fit in, come in with these people. Even the first year got here, it was – you could feel it. I felt it the first year I got here. Even with the games was different. We were starting to win it more. And mm-hmm. I think we won 16 more games than we did the 20 yep. more games than we did the previous season. So, I mean, the improvement of our team and just everything, man, and just how it worked out, like it was all – Yeah, meant like, to be. Like meant to be. Yeah. And then once you meet everybody here because you're coming into a new situation – there's always this dynamic of, you know, there's the four guys, like this core four guys. Mm-hmm. Why do you think everybody – why do you think that that worked in particular? Because you're all from different backgrounds. I think it worked coming in because them guys were still finding themselves, Mike and Mark and, you know, you know Rudy, them guys, and we had such a young core. And, you know, I already was kind of me and what I do. So coming in like that helped them guys – like Mike said, help them grow and help them develop into what they are now. You know, even with Mark, you know, he still could play in the NBA if he wanted to. But, you know. <laughs> because you wanted the ball. Uh, yeah. I thought that was funny that he said that. Right? Like, I mean, it's yeah. easy. To, you don't have a lot of pressure when yeah. there's one guy on the team that's saying, no, give me the ball. <laughs> yeah, it takes a lot of pressure off a lot four, of them. Turn yeah. four. Yeah. That's what Hager used and to turn say. Four. Turn, turn four. four. Turn Yanks. four. We need a bucket. Turn man. four. Shout out to my man, Yeggs, yeah. man. You know, he going through his thing, man. Shout yeah. out, man. Hope he, you know, blessings to him, man. But, um, you know, uh, turn four. Get that ball in there. You know, like you said, I, that took the pressure off because, man, you know, me, I, yep. I'm running to the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Where the ball at? How many? Do you, how many times do you think you told Mike Conley as after a bucket was made against the Grizzlies, I would constantly see you running alongside him as you were coming up the court, and are you telling him to not run whatever the coach is telling him to run? At the time, I always figured that you're saying, "Just throw me the damn ball." Man, that's funny because it's true. I'm that's running across. Yeah, I'm. Bro, go. Cross four. He like okay, Zebo. See, he, Mike already know. He like all right. After come to he, he already know. So he he know my body language. Like he know me. Like he like okay. The best. Try to get. <laughs> my fa- my favorite part, and this is when the, you know, you never want to take away from coaches, but it is when you hit the supernova stretch, and it's fun to watch it back. The the, the sick game six against yeah. San Antonio, and there's that six minute span, and. Credit to the documentary, they got Lionel to say, "I just, I'm not, call, I'm not calling plays Nothing. anymore. Like this is, what, what am I gonna do? So what am I gonna wet. call? You're shooting threes, you're jab stepping, you're hook, taking little baby hooks across the lane. Give me the ball. That was, I mean, look, when anybody asks their favorite Zebo moment or anybody asks, you know, what do you remember the most? That's what, that's what I always say." 
Is it yours? Yep. It is. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's, that's Antonio. That's serious, man. And just. Poor Antonio underdog. McDice. McDice, mm. my boy. Man, McDice strong, though. McDice strong. But like you said, just um, just being underdogs, man, that, that, that moment sticks with us. I'm like, you kind of, like with the city, too. You know, winning that, defining that, then I don't think it'll ever be as crunk as it was, how it was. But then again, you know, we got the new, you never know. Because yep. we got, you know, the new generation, and we got Ja, Jaron, and, you know, Dylan, and Bain, and, you know, our young core is such a, you know, so, such promising, such yep. great upside. So I think it's going to get back like that. You think you were ever in a zone like that, ever? No. Nah. Never? No. Just something really took zone. over you. Yeah. Win. Huh? Like I said I wasn't letting them get I wasn't letting them get out of here. So <laughs> win, win, win. <laughs> Real. And so when people then then come to you about your favorite memories, mm-hmm. that's what you Yep. It's my whole right. time here, man. What about the flip side though? What loss still bothers you? Man, that loss that bothers me was when Reggie Jackson hit that three. And overtime thing was triple overtime. And no, no, Harden hit it. Was it hard? Or the, yes, Harden. Harden hit it. You know how did I Reggie hit the step back three at yeah. home? You know how I remember? Because we went to training camp the next year, and Lionel had it as his screensaver on his iPad. And I was like, what is that? And he blamed Grievous. Yeah. He blamed Grievous. He he, and then they got him traded. <laughs> I love Grievous. I Grievous, ran into Grievous boy. not that long ago. But he Grease blamed Grievous. Boy. It was do not leave him. And if you watch, Westbrook drives into a million it guys, is. and he throws it all. He's under the basket, and he throws it all the way out to Harden, that who game. knocks down the three. And that guy. He'll, he'll, I, I, think, I think until the day he dies, Lionel will never forgive Grievous for that. Man, that That's game. tough. He's a rookie, yeah. too. Yeah. And Grievous, he, he had some good moments. Yeah, sure. Grievous had a lot of good moments, but like you say, it just – that three man that, one, that, that game because that flipped the man. series, and that yeah. is right. You know, everybody always talks about that 2011 of beating the Spurs. Like it was Dallas, right? Dallas won the title, and you guys, man, kind of had Dallas's it. number in the same way. Yeah, you know, and we was thinking about that. You know, thinking about that during that time. Like, Which do you think was the best version? Mm. What do you think was the best one you were on? Probably that year. Probably that year we'd be. We'd you think the eleven team mm-hmm. was? Yeah. Because you were at your absolute apex. Yep. Yeah. See, we just we was clicking, man. The Golden State clicking. year is pretty damn good. Golden State year. Mike had broke his um, nose. Even the one before Tony that. that one yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. The so, one where Tony, Tony busts his hamstring. Yeah. Right. So we had a lot of great moments, man. Like you said, it's it's every it's for every year it's something special. Yeah. That you know what I mean that. About that year, about that team, about yep. the guys. Yeah. When when people think about all the memories of you playing in a uniform, you talked about this, and now they, they are, they're, you've seen the record they're giving away. There's all kinds of oh, audio yeah. clips. I got to get I need a couple of them. I definitely need a couple and of them. Included on the record is an interview. I need a box of them, Monica. <laughs> the interview you did on the show right after the Perkins thing. And then <laughs> it's on there. The interview's on there. And where you say, I'm pretty good with these hands, and we don't bluff, and all this stuff. If you're talking to Mark, you're talking to me. There was yeah. a million great quotes from that. But then after the documentary came out, and we did this panel the other night on Sunday, you said during the panel, and you said during the game, or uh, during the uh, documentary, yeah. I guess the statute of limitations has ended, yeah. and that you, when you guys were running to the back, there's that famous you know, yeah. video of you guys both like kind of running to the back. And for the first time, you finally said, yes, I did. Yeah. Cause you got fined a lot. Yeah. So I, he figured didn't get, did, I figured you did. I, I something. got fined more than KP. KP, they only find him like slap on a wrist, like 10 something. They find me like 30 something grand. And this was, you're going to like, this is when you say I'll beat your ass. Yeah. And now you're running to the back and they have in the documentary for those of you that have not seen it. It is a very weird hallway. Right there. It's actually accessible. Most arenas you it's would not, not have the opportunity to. It, nah. It's all the way on the different sides. So Every when arena. you're going there, you're thinking, all right, if you want to fight, let's fight. 
right? Yeah, I see he's him take, saying, I'll yeah. meet you at the bus or whatever he's saying. I seen, him, I seen him both off. So once I see him take off running, I'm like, damn, is he, he running towards, he trying to get at me? So that's when I took off running, check his temperature, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> see what was going on. Yeah. So you get back there, you go through the door, and you say there's cops. Yeah. How many? Shit, about four. Five, Are you five being, six of them. They hold, they're stopping you from getting to him. Yeah. Because you're going to get to him. Would you have fought him? I was, if he would have. Maybe he would have. You said you were going to take a check. Yeah, check. Yeah. So if there were not cops there, do you think that you and Kendrick Perkins would have fought Man, in the back we, of that arena? We probably would have. <laughs> you know, I'm a heavyweight. Yeah, heavyweight too. I mean. I could box though, so I know, but the surveillance footage on that would just be <laughs> unbelievable. Man. You know they're doing all these celebrity boxing things now. Man, for the right price. <laughs> KP, for the right price. Get What's your ass in the price? ring, KP. What's the for right? the right price? We man. can settle it. Huh? We can settle yeah, it. Yeah, for the right price. We could put you on like you know that they're doing that uh, who is nah. it? Darren Williams or Frank Gore or whatever. Yeah. But we could settle the score. <laughs> Steve <laughs> versus Kendrick Perk. And he's like doing ESPN yeah, stuff. So he might man. not want to. Now Perk doing good up. though, man. That's my man. He's doing good though. You might I'm happy do it for in him. Head gear, right? Something like nah, that. Nah, we too big for some head gear. I know, but you got but he's got that face. He's got to put it on TV every day. If you if you yeah. bang it up. We gonna do it in off season when he gets some time. When it's off season, <laughs> would you fight at one of those celebrity boxing things? I don't know. I, I don't think so. You don't think so? Nah. No. When is the so. last time you played basketball? I'm talking like in a game. You Man, ran up you know, and down. I'm about, I'm about to start hooping. I'm about to start playing. You know, uh, Meta World PC. They be playing five on five. You know, out there on the West Coast. So I'm gonna start playing a lot of guys. <laughs> You know, I'm I bet those are I bet those are I Man, bet those uh, are fun games. Yes. Yeah, Better World Peace Better and his World buddies. <laughs> oh my god. You know, Meta's strong too. He's yes. still he in pretty good shape. So, you know, just I definitely want to get back to playing and just you know, I love the game, man. And you know, I want to I told talk to the coach, I wanna be I'm be more in a, with the guys and practice and start coming around more and work some of the guys out. Oh, you had to love uh yeah. Jaren tomato chesting. <laughs> oh my goodness. Man, uh, Anthony, Anthony uh. Davis last night. <laughs> that was that. old school tomato like chest, that. tomato chest. I seen that into the basket and lay it in. Man, Boom. Ain't a lot of Spartan dog. He got, he got he's so much talent. He can go outside and inside and shot. Yep. you know with the with the game now, the big guys got to know how to shoot and they want him shooting them. You know, keep the paint you know open. So, man, Jared, he's gonna be all star too one day. Yep. So when was uh, uh, you got to answer my question though? When's the last time you actually ran up and down a court of play? <laughs> Man, with my daughter, we was just working out. So I ain't played in so long. Man. I don't even remember the last time I've been on a court and played. When was that filmed? The very end of the doc where she asks you, can you still dunk and you do it? It was a couple, about a month ago. About a month ago. Oh, I what? still can dunk. Oh, yeah, so about you a month can. Ahead. Oh, so you're fine. Oh, yeah. It was yeah, only yeah. a month ago. Yeah, about a month ago. I yeah, was I'm like, still man, when did they now. film that? <laughs> When did they film that? I'm still you know when he said he, he can still dunk. That was <laughs> only a month ago. She just my daughter just laughed at me. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I I did it. Though. Oh, I see her promoted on yeah. who on yeah. uh, like uh, what's the um, House of Highlights yeah. and whatever. They, I mean, they put these videos up of her. Bro, she looks exactly like you. Man, it Jean, is Jean's is crazy. Freaky. It's crazy, right? It's freaky. I mean, she finishes with the left sometimes too. Yeah, she going and, both hands. So, yep. and she's got the she's got the post moves. Yeah, she been working, man. She put her time in. Like she's working out before she came here. So with Coach Jordan, and she working on her left hand. I tell you, you got to work on your left. You know, shoot it more. So here's some of the videos yeah. that were at the at the end of the doc. She's got a little up and under action. Yeah. Is do you know if that is her dream? Yeah, she, she left, wants to be a professional basketball. player. I think so. Yeah. I think so. But she's so good. She's so good in the classroom. She's a good kid. She gets straight A's. So, you know, she does everything. You know, you ask as a you know, a young lady, so you know, sky's the limit. You know, but it is kind of crazy day. that you, you probably never imagined when you had daughters that he would be <laughs> right? That nah. you might be grooming a professional athlete because right. we grew up in a different era, right? right? Where that wasn't that was that wasn't a goal. That wasn't a goal because right? A lot of people didn't make it. it right. wasn't, and there wasn't and the WNBA was not the same way. 
Now it's different, you know, and yep. that's a good thing. It's more better, and you know, it's more a chance for these kids do that want to live their dream like I did when I was coming up. I wanted to, you know, be in the NBA, play basketball, but you know, back then they tell you, man, it's it's, it's, it's not a lot of people that make it. Yeah. But now, you know, it's the same way with today, but you yeah. know, kids got a better chance, I think, in in living their dream, and um, you know, the stuff that's provided to these kids out there now, camps and you know, all kind of different stuff, yeah. AAU and you know, tournaments, and so it's a, it's, it's great now. Yeah, and she's got a chance. Yeah, she's yeah. got a chance. She got a chance because I keep work. I just tell her keep working hard. You know what you put into it is what you get out of it. You know, you know, and um, you know when I got on the court, I always thought I was the best player on the court, no matter who was on the court. You know, I had that mindset. So that's one thing that was not covered, and obviously, I'm I'm aware of your Marion career, mm -hmm. unbelievable. Also, speaking of the whole accolades thing, I had a guy that's a professor at the University of Indiana mm -hmm. tell me. When, when you were on the Grizzlies, he said, I still watch the Grizzlies to this day. And he goes, and because they have Zach Randolph. And I was like, why? And he's like, because one of the greatest high school basketball games I saw was him being mad that Jared Jeffries had won Mr. Indiana. Yeah. And he busted his ass. True. In the Facts. state in, for the state championship, yeah. right? Big state. Is that right? But that is really like until that's why it's going to be so wild to see the fifty go up. So much as I've known you for now over a decade, so much of your story is you're not the best guy. Yeah. Somebody is you. Like when Dirk would come in, if Dirk's going to have twenty three and twelve, you want to have twenty six and fourteen. Right. Right. Like you took all those matchups personally and always ranked behind this guy and ranked behind this guy. And it really goes back all the way to high school, it right? It does. My whole life been an underdog, you know, where I come from and, you know, the circumstances that I came out of and, and was in, and I made the best best out of it. So, like you said, just always been an underdog. Like in high school, you know, Jerry was going to Indiana. I was in Marion, you know, rough little small town and, you know, rough around the edge. I had gotten in a little trouble. But – you know, that's my – I suppose <laughs> Mr. Basketball, me and Jerry, that's that's my brother. We yep. talked about a month ago. He lived in L.A. too, so, you know, I always met man, where my trophy at? You know, we played with the Knicks, man. Bring my bring my uh, Mr. Basketball trophy, you know, so I always <laughs> mess with him about that. But, uh, um, yeah, I thought I should have won it, you know what I mean? So, so I got to ask you about the whole from where I come from because that's a huge story of this. Yeah. It's not – they don't go they, – they cover from when you got to Memphis and yeah. on in, in the documentary. Um but what is not really covered is that whole, like, where I come yeah. from and how I got to here. And it does come up when you're doing a lot of the community service because you're talking to kids. And you, in many cases, whether it is uh, donating so that pe uh, families can get their lights turned on or you're talking to some kid that isn't doing that well in school or not paying attention to his mom or whatever. Yeah. And, like, you say many times, like, when I go and donate and get these people's lights turned on, that was me. When I see this little kid who's not really into school and maybe not listening to everybody and maybe getting caught up in some bad stuff, that's me, right. right? And so I guess the question is, obviously you had immense talent, but there's tons of guys that are like you that don't yeah. have the success, that don't get out and certainly don't have the success to where something's hanging in the rafters. So why? Why? How and why do you think – you did not become somebody that was taken in by circumstance and that, you know, a dream was unrealized because Man, of circumstance, I right? Think, I think really myself, within me, myself, just how much I wanted it in the drive. You know what I mean? I think that was something built in me. You know, I used to get up in high school and run on a – Bypass, you know, nobody used to tell me I got to do it or nothing. Like, I was trying to get in. I was junior, sophomore year because I always had goals. I used to tell my homeboys that I was going to the NBA in the ninth, tenth grade. You did? Yeah. I said, I'm going to the league. And that's why I tell you, like, man, for real. You know, they, they, they you know, they, you know, when you tell them they believe me, but they like, okay, well, you, you confident. You know, they never say, oh, you're not going, but they're like, okay, Zebo, you, you know what I'm saying? So, did you have any example? Like, you know, when I talked to TA, once Jawan made it out of, you know, he, Jawan yeah. Howard was down the street. Yeah. So all the kids were like, mm. oh, man, see, I'm coming. Howard. I'm coming from a CTA, come from a big city. I'm coming from a small town. Yeah. So we ain't got nobody. We ain't had no NBA players 
comes to my neighborhood or we ain't had nobody to make it out. And we did. We had we 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 a basketball. Marion is a basketball. You know, we got the it's the hotbed. So mm-hmm. we got the most states in the state state championship. So we got we got hoopers that came out of Marion. James Blackman, Dave Koska. So we, it was guys that did pave the way. Yeah. You know, Jay Edwards. You know, paved the way. Lennon Jones. So guys out that town did pave the way for me. Were you already tall by the time you were in, like, uh, freshman, sophomore year of high yeah. school? Yep, I was about 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Okay, so you knew. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Hey, I got the first part. Yep. Right? I'm bigger than everybody. Yep. When were you the best player on your team? At what point? Well, I, my freshman year, I was kind of – I played, like, JV a little bit. But, like, my sophomore year, I started, started varsity. We went to the state championship. We had seniors. And um, we got runner-up. So, I felt I was the best player my sophomore year, even though we had older players. Mm-hmm. But – I feel like I was better than them, and they probably tell you that too. You know what I mean? That yeah, he at that. But young your age, freshman year, you were not on the varsity team. No, I was dressing out, but I wasn't playing. I was playing JV. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So Coach Smelly wasn't playing me on varsity. I always try to talk. To, I, I talk, and I'm sure, obviously, mm-hmm. with you, with your kids, I always try to talk to kids all the time. It's always a different trajectory. I can't right. tell you how many professional athletes I've talked to or to listen to. You know, there's a famous story about Jordan. Mm-hmm. I was watching this thing the other day about Tom Brady. He was like. My sophomore year of high school, I wasn't going to start a quarterback unless the kid that he left to go play basketball. He was just going to focus on that. I mean, that's the greatest. Wow. Right? I mean, and Patrick Mahomes has been playing quarterback for like seven years. It's like as of today. Like yeah. he's seven. Like he's only wow. been playing that long. And so many guys, like it's later in life. And even mm-hmm. for you, like that would seem people are so worried about their kid being amazing when they're nine and ten. And 11, yeah. and 12, right? You're, here you are, yeah. and you say, your freshman year, you didn't make the varsity team. Uh-huh. You played JV yeah. like everybody else did, right? It's kind of yeah. crazy to think about, yeah. right? Like you said, it's your own, your own path, so keep working. You know, that's why I tell my kids, keep working. Why'd you go Why'd to you Michigan work? State? I went to Michigan State because Coach Izzo, Coach Cream, Coach um, – guys was there then, Coach Cream, uh, he at University of Georgia now, but and Coach uh, Gregory, Brian Gregory. Them guys was at every single game, every single practice, every chance they could be somewhere where I was at, they was there. And I was looking around. There was a lot of other coaches there too, but they was on me. So I was like, damn, you know, I want to go somewhere where they messing with me at, where they showing me love. So, I'm, you know, I'm a loyal person. So I was like, you know, I'm going to go to state, you know. I'm going to go to Michigan State because coach them was, they showing me how bad they really want me. They almost never have one and done's. Right. Yeah, it wasn't. No, they I, I was no, going you, in. It was. You, I was going in one and done. I was going. Out, I was coming out in high you school. You knew no matter what. Yeah, I knew no matter you what. Were, you told everybody, "I'm going. I'll be there a year." Yeah. Me and Jason Richards, you just talk about it. You know, he. I. I made him leave. He had a great season his sophomore year. I was like, man, I'm going to leave. He's like, I'm going too. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, and both went. He, and that said, was, he said, "I'm going. I'm going too." Man, that was the first time that coach had a underclassman leave. Was he, he upset? Was, hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he was upset. He was upset. He was upset. He was more upset with me than Jason. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Jason was a little older, but, you know, I was. he never had a freshman leave. Mm. So he was kind of more upset with me that I left. But he, you know, he was like, okay, you know, do what you got to do. He coached on my situation. He know yeah. where I come from. He know, yeah. you know, my mother's situation. So he understood. You know, when, I told Coach I want to. You talk yeah. about being around these guys, and you're almost like a gatekeeper. They all yeah. know. They all call you OG, right? Like, mm-hmm. what, how do you express to them? Like, when you talk to them about the Grizzlies or yeah. the city or adapting to the city or whatever else, because they Man. clearly everything you say comes from a point of wisdom to them, Man, and, uh, especially yeah. when they see your number, right? Yeah, I mean, not only that, but they, you know, them guys is the team, the team now, they all good guys, and, you know, with numbers still respect, and I respect them too and want the best for them. So they understand that. You know, young guys know I want the best for them, and you know, all of them be all star. So I just tell them real life situations. You know, they know about everything else with basketball, and they all got my number. I just tell them what not to do. You know, the mistakes I made. You know, I tell Jai and you know other players, you know, what not to do. You know, keep your head clean and make sure you you know, you know what they doing, staying in the gym, which they already do that. Mm-hmm. So you know, I try to tell them about life lessons more. You know. Yeah. You know, real stuff. Real tears tomorrow? Man. Probably. You think so? I think yeah. so, too. I mean, it is an – I can't imagine the way you're going to feel when you see that go up. Man. And the fact that every time you're in that arena, 
it's going to be there, right? I mean, there is some, there's got to be for you some level of pride, like, you know, yes. it was all worth it, right? Whatever. Yeah. Right? Because certainly there was a time, and I, I, that was one of my favorite things about that doc was watching that opening press conference. If you'd have told somebody that day, after those questions, this guy's going to be the most beloved athlete in the city whose number is going to be hanging in the rafters. Yeah. It's improbable, you would say. That's improbable. Yeah. I wouldn't <laughs> even say it. Yeah, like you said. <clears throat> as well as you crazy. could have imagined it going. Exactly. Right. It's crazy to see it. Uh, I can't wait to see your outfit tomorrow night. What you got? Man, you know I'm doing great. You know I got to come with that grizzly blue. You got a blue suit. Come grizzly blue, man. You know, come on, man. It's the only one way to do it. You got to do it. Did you really get a blue suit? It's going to be a surprise. Oh, my God. I can't, <laughs> I can't wait to see this. I'm come in boxed in, man. Man, congratulations. Thank you. God, Thank you, brother. I can't believe this day's got. It makes me feel old as crap. I'm sure it makes you feel old, too. Yeah, it does. See your retired jersey. <laughs> see your retired jersey up there, right? Yeah. Seems like it was yesterday. It does. All right, brother. I'll see you tomorrow night. Man, thanks Congrats. for everything, Chris. Zach Randolph. Uh, hey. I want to thank WinBet. Uh, you go to the app store and you can grab that WinBet app. Uh, and if you want to put some action on these games this weekend, WinBet's the place to do it. I also want to remind you that uh, that Grizzlies Houston game is tomorrow night. If you ain't got tickets, you better get them. Yeah. First 5,000 are going to get that, uh, that uh, the, the record. With yeah, the Zebo, for the city, you look did. at that. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that's Commemorative record. Man, well, I'm going to put this up in my house. You, 50 for the city, you know? <laughs> so. It's going to be a fun night. First 5,000 are going to get that record, so make sure you're there early. And the Grizzlies yeah. playing unbelievably the Red Hot Rockets. Who would have imagined that, right? So it actually could be a pretty good game uh, going on tomorrow night. But the big... Big circumstance is going to be Zebo's number going up in the rafters. Thanks to Devin Walker. Thanks to John Royster across the glass. Thanks to Robbie back in the studio. Until tomorrow, not tomorrow, Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody. We gone.